Hey, what's up? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. Today is Monday, February 19th. It is President's Day, but more important, it is Joey Diaz's birthday. That's right. Joey Coco Diaz turns 55 today. Do yourself a favor right now and go to Twitter and immediately wish this man a happy birthday. Everyone on Twitter and Instagram, wish Joey Diaz a happy birthday. This guy is a superhuman, great friend, funny-ass man, and living the dream of a 55-year-old man out every night doing stand-up. A true soldier, as he would say, a soldier out there in the podcast world, killing it. Killing it on TV, killing it all over in the game. Happy birthday, Joey Diaz. All right, guys, let's get into it. How are you today? You're off, you're laying around, maybe a little hungover from a three-day weekend, and uh, or maybe you're just, you got to work because you got a shitty boss or one of those jobs that doesn't care about President's Day, whatever. Welcome to the episode today. Great guest today, incredible guest. Uh, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram but about a month ago, I was wearing a jacket, and I put up a photo of it and said, best jacket I've ever owned, and everybody went crazy, like, that thing's amazing. What is it? And uh, I posted up, it's made by Ship John. Uh, this is a handmade episode, and the reason I wanted to have this man on, which, by the way... Uh, his name is not Ship John, which I thought it was the whole time. That's his company. His name is Mike Elias, and he owns Ship John, and he makes incredible stuff. We first uh, talked up in Portland about a year ago when I was up there doing comedy, and uh, I, I found the jacket by random on Instagram, and I was like, holy shit, this is great. But not only does he make jackets, he plays music. He also uh, makes leather goods and all kinds of great stuff. But he uh, hit a home run with this jacket. And you can uh, go to his Instagram and see what I'm talking about. He's a great, great man. And I'm, I'm very fired up to have him on. He came down for Inspirations, which was uh, the big clothing show once a year here in L.A., and so I got the chance to have him on. And I'm happy for him. Anybody that works hard uh, with their hands or self-made or, you know, made in America, all that stuff, I'm a sucker for it if it's done well. And this guy hit it out of the park with this jacket. He's got a great story. And uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Perfect, perfect, uh, perfect handmade guest is what Mr. Mike Ship John is. Uh, a little tired today. Been uh, a crazy week. Just trying to get my uh, head wrapped around some uh, moving, moving bullshit. And I'll fill you in on that more later on once it all plays out. In the meantime, uh, what else is going on? If you live in Indianapolis, if you live in Indianapolis... And you want to go see L.A. Guns and Hero Jr. on February 28th. My boys, Hero Jr., have donated two tickets to the show. And the first person that emails me and says, I tweeted at Joey Diaz, happy birthday. I will give you two tickets. I only have one pair. And my email is Dean Del Rey at yahoo.com so the first person that does that today and you live in indianapolis please make sure you don't just do it yeah i live in oklahoma but i wanted to be first make sure you can go to the show february 28th that's la guns and hero jr that's going to be incredible uh what else is happening some great donations went down today my boy heno thank you for pledging on patreon Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey for donations of the podcast. Keeps the wheels greased. Ghost of California, which, by the way, was an incredible band that sent me some songs a few days ago. And I listened to it, and I was like, wow, this band's fucking great. Ghost of California, check them out. 
They donated to the podcast. Very cool. Thank you, guys. A um, few other things, and then we'll get it going here. Saw Queens of the Stone Age Saturday night at the Forum, and I got to tell you, holy shit, they smoked the place down. Queens of the Stone Age. Uh, if you have not seen them on this tour, get out there and see this tour. I, I got to tell you, I've had uh, John Theodore on. I had Josh Homme on, uh, Troy Van Leeuwen. Uh, I've, had them, I've, I've had them on the podcast, and they're uh, friends of mine. And I got to tell you, man, they are very, very inspirational. Uh, just out there, just doing art to the fullest tilt. Just delivering a rock show, man. Uh, get out there and see this tour. They... It was amazing. They brought Mark Ronson on on this forum show and uh, played four songs with him, including Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. And uh, Josh Homme killed it on the vocal on that. Incredible time. Uh, Bill Burr and I went, and we were just like kids in a candy store just going like, oh, my God, this show is killer. It really was killer. So thank you, Queens. For uh, having us, I can't thank you enough, man. You guys just absolutely killed it. What do I got? Some shows coming up here real quick, and then we'll get to the episode. Um, let's see here. I will be in Buffalo March 8, 9, and 10 at Helium with Steve Renazizi. I will also be in New York City from March 11th through the 24th including the four, what is it, uh, the 21st with Joey Diaz in Nyack at, uh, I think it's an improv, but it's up on my website. Check that out. Nashville, I will be with Bill Burr April 20th and 21st, or I, I think it's two days. It might not be. April 20th at... Uh, I hit this intro, it's just kind of hoopty. I'm just all over the board because my brain is just, it's tired, man. Uh, but the 20th for sure at the Ryman. April 5 and 6, Joey Diaz and I are coming to New Mexico. That's also on the website, deandelray.com. It's about it right now for shows. I hope everybody has a great day off. Uh, oh, Oh, here's something I wanted to talk about. This is hilarious. I wear expensive denim, right? I've been wearing, uh, I've been wearing, you know, like great denim for years. People go, oh, that stuff's a lot of money, but it lasts forever. I've been wearing incredible denim, but I've been wearing like fucking two dollar underwear, which is funny. I don't know why, but my. <laughs> My whole life, like, for a long time, I didn't even wear underwear. I was just like, rock and roll, free balling. Because <laughs> I'm free balling. <laughs> I didn't wear underwear forever because I just, I couldn't stand how it felt, you know. It was just like all constricting and everything. And then I, I, I started wearing underwear, I don't know, about 10 years ago. And I just, I never even knew that there was good underwear. I just go get a three-pack at like fucking Walgreens and put it on and just be like, this sucks. But it was, I thought that's what it was, which is weird because I'm such a clothing freak. But there I am just, just getting Walmart underwear. But uh, about, I think about two weeks ago, I was just, I was just online and I was like, I, I'm going to try some good underwear. And I had heard about this underwear, Mac Weldon. I was like, ah, I'm going to try it because they had this whole thing like, yeah, try it. And if you don't like it, we'll give your money back and you can keep them. So I was like, all right, I'll just try it out. And uh, I got a pair and it was absolutely, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I was instantly hooked. I was like, I got to get a couple more pairs. And I just, I, th I threw all my old underwear away, which is hilarious. I, I'm, I'm still at that point in my career that if I bought the wrong underwear, I, I couldn't just throw it away. I would just be like, well, I fucked up. And I would just wear the underwear and be all uncomfortable in my nice jeans. 
But the, I, I got a pair of this Mack Weldon, and uh, I got to tell you, man, they've got this amazing underwear. It's silver underwear, and it's, uh, it's like it's got this material that eliminates odors. Uh, but not only that, it's crazy comfortable. Like, I don't even know I'm wearing underwear. I just love this. Uh, and, and it's funny. It's like I hit them up like, hey, man, uh, you know, I love your stuff. And uh, I'll give you guys a shout out on the podcast because it's, it's great. I, I just can't believe how good it is. No more just uh, up your ass or constricting. And they make a pair for, like, if you wear tight jeans like me, I like to go rock and roll in <laughs> tight jeans. They make underwear that doesn't just roll up. You know, that's the worst. Like, you're wearing underwear and you got tight jeans on. You can just see a roll. <laughs> like, oh, they, there's your underwear. You know, so they make this great underwear. And uh, they also make great socks. I'm, I'm going to dive into the socks because that's another thing. I just bought shitty socks, too. I'd have great jackets, great denim, and uh, great shirts. And then I'd have shit socks and underwear. <laughs> it made no sense. But I guess being 52 now, I'm like figuring it out. It took me that long to figure out good underwear. Anyway, they got great socks. They got great underwear shirts, hoodies, and everything. But start with the underwear. That's what I would do right away. And uh, they'll give you a uh, 20% off deal if you use the promo code ROCK, R-O-C-K. So uh, go check it out. Go to their website, uh, MacWeldon.com. That's M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com. And uh, use the code R-O-C-K. And do it. You know, it helps the show, and, uh, and I believe in the product. Like I said, I never advertise stuff I don't like, ever. I get people all the time, hey, you want to advertise? I'm, nope. Nope. But this shit is great. No, no fucking up the ass. No, no strict, not, you know, strangling the balls. None of that. <laughs> this stuff is great. Mack Weldon underwear. Get it. MacWeldon.com. Use the code ROCK. But right now, enjoy this amazing handmade episode with my man, Ship John. All right, another episode of Let to Be Talked. This will be a handmade edition, and... Uh, but well, we got a fantastic guest today, which is very funny because the entire time that I've been uh, talking about your product, I've called you Ship John. Never knew your name wasn't John. <laughs> I just thought it was Ship John. Introduce yeah. yourself. I'm, uh, my name is Mike Elias. I run Ship John. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that a, hilarious? Because like, I'm talking to people. I go, yeah, I was talking to Ship John a couple days ago, and they're like, Ship John, that's hilarious. That's not his name. People would tell me that. I go, yeah. how can it not be his name? It's such a great name. Yeah, it did. It's a it's a funny thing. I mean, it. A lot of people call me that, and it's kind of it's kind of turned into a like I, I just answer to it now. I'm I'm kind of John now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, but why? Uh, we're gonna get all into what you do and everything. But why did you call your company Ship John? So I grew up in New Jersey in a, in a little town called Dividing Creek. Yeah, it's way south Jersey, middle of nowhere. Um, my dad's an oysterman, and I my first job was on the oyster boats um, out oh, yeah. in Delaware Bay. And this is beautiful fucking lighthouse right in, right in the middle of the bay it's called ship john shoal and uh i had to rename my business it used to be called tomahawk and there were some issues with uh somebody else owned the rights to that and, uh, oh it was and, called tomahawk yeah tomahawk portland was what it was called wow um, for for the first like eight years of me doing this i love that word tomahawk it's a great word it really is that's it, it just rang you know it, it yeah just, another yeah. great word and um i always wanted to call my band this was canteen Canteen's a great word. I man. fucking love that yeah. word because it was two things. Canteen reminds me of the old aluminum ones with the Mexican blanket yeah. on them. Uh -huh. That's yeah. a sick canteen. And when I was young going to boys club camp, canteen was where you bought candy and uh, 
and like sodas and stuff. Gotcha. You, yeah. Hey, I'm going to the canteen. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a fucking cool. I should call my comedy record Canteen. You should. For no <laughs> reason. They're like, why is it called Canteen? <laughs> <laughs> I like that word. Tomahawk Canteen. Tomahawk Canteen. <laughs> wow. So you call um, it. Uh, so it was Tomahawk, and then, and, and, uh, like I said, some, some trademark issues went down, and I had to rename it. And I already had that. This lighthouse tattooed on my arm. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was looking at it one day. My buddy Kyler put it on there. And, and it's like, I, I've always loved it. It's a beautiful piece of, piece of architecture. Yeah. And it's like a ode to my, it's like my hickory wind back and looking back to New Jersey. And uh, yeah, that's right. Because uh, I love things like to me, I really think of um, classic things where I'm from the Golden Gate Bridge, yeah. you know, architecture and, and, uh, you know, uh, Alcatraz, man, yeah. as evil as what was, uh, happening on there, the, you know, the evil that it held in yeah. the beauty of it too, which was the torture of, uh, the inmates, I guess it was to torture them. Like here you are in this yeah. rock looking at beauty. But Look, to yeah. me, I was like, well, if that's the prison you're going to be in, that would be the one yeah. the beautiful sea yeah, and stuff. We're in on the other side looking all pretty over there but treating. lighthouses are amazing there's one down in the uh bottom of the baja down at uh cabo gotcha. it's an old abandoned lighthouse and and lighthouses remind me of stuff like jaws yeah. and uh bird that movie the birds yeah, stuff yeah. like that you know lighthouses are, are are pretty amazing they always feel kind of desolate you know they're out there on their own and there's, there's something one. about a guy working in one yeah totally living there with his yeah. family Dude, there's there's one up in Oregon called Tillamook Rock. Yeah, and it's I think it's oh, a I know Tillamook the, Rock. Off. Yeah, it's insane. I've I read some stories about them building that. They they lost a lot of workers building that. I don't know the the numbers, but it, it was yeah. You know, it's in the middle of the, the Pacific, and and it's just this rock out there. There's pictures of it with waves crashing over the top of it and shit. It's I mean, people lived in those like, yeah. and they would have families, and they, that was their life. They yeah. ran the the lighthouse the so ships wouldn't crash. Yeah. That's pretty rad, man. Uh, that, Ship John. And then how about, uh, so it was just named it straight off of uh, Ship John uh, Lighthouse? Ship John Shoal, it's called, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Um, so, yeah, it's just I've, I've always loved that thing. I'd sit on the oyster boat rocking, picking oysters and staring at this lighthouse. And, you know, it just kind of seared into my brain as a, as a cool thing. Uh, picking oysters, is that a hard job? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was hard. 14-hour days. A lot of it's like, you know, a two-hour ride out in the boat and then, um, out there we uh, we would dredge them, so big old oh. dredges, dredges with on the, the side. net. Uh, it's like a cage, right? Cage dread, uh, dredge. and it goes through the mud like it scrapes the mud, scrapes, scrapes and then you the pull it up, and the mud drops out, and there they yep. are. Yep, and then they uh, dump into a hopper and. Uh, my job, I just stood at the conveyor belt and picked the good ones out, threw them in a basket. and That's what your dad did? Yeah, he still does it. Wow, yeah, really? He still works in the boats. Wow, that's fucking nuts. Yeah. Yep. Um, is yeah. it a good living? How do you get paid? Like uh, so many um, oysters per pound? Uh, or? It, the, the, that's how the company makes his money. I, as, a, as a deckhand, I'm, I think I made 125 bucks a day or something like that. And that's a lot of money, right? Yeah. Back then? Yeah, when I, you know, I was you know, eight, 18, 17 uh, when I was doing it, maybe a little younger. But 14 yeah. hour days, yeah. brutal. <laughs> yeah, you got to get up uh, 2.33 in the morning. And uh, they call it in the wintertime, they call it working can't to can't. Really? You can't see when you're going out. You can't see when you're coming in. <laughs> Working you go out can't the dark. To yeah. can't. I love those old school, old guys uh, yeah. talking, old you know, like like spinning yarn. Yeah. This guy's been spinning yarn for years or, or five knots, you know, all that <laughs> yeah. kind of fucking, you yeah. know, there's so many old. That's why I, Ship John rings to me in that way. It's like this, it's kind of a weird, um, it, it, the words sound kind of weird together, but they work together in that kind of old school way, I think. Yeah. You grew up in uh, Jersey. How old are you? I'm uh, 36. 36. Yeah. It's funny because you look a lot like uh, a buddy of mine that's from Jersey. I uh, Almost identical, really? man. Yeah. And uh, I feel like Jersey people, a lot of them have the, a look. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like almost like, uh, like, oh, this guy's from Jersey for yeah. sure. Yeah, you know, totally. it's, it's pretty bizarre. Yeah. Uh, Where I'm from in Jersey is it's it's not Jersey it's it's yeah. south it's pretty much Alabama down there it's oh really I mean I can oh it's down at the bottom uh, I got you yeah there's there used to be a stoplight in the town next to mine and they took it out <laughs> really <laughs> there, was like a, there was a gas station shut down it's the middle of nowhere you know I grew up riding dirt bikes out there and I could ride trails for hours and not how many people uh, population uh, 
I mean, the, the town itself, Dividing Creek, has maybe a 1,000, 1,500. So is it kind of hickey or something? Oh, like it's just, really hickey. Yeah, it's really hickey. And what's there, what's there for money besides the, uh, do uh, they all dredge for uh, oysters? It's a fishing village, Port Norris and Dividing Creek. That's, that's the main uh, income. And then they dredge a lot of sand there, too. The, the soil is really sandy. So, the, you know, there's a lot of glass factories that have been there forever. And um, uh, there's... Bigger towns kind of close by, but right. there ain't much down there, honestly. Was, What's the big city next to you, like the closest? Uh, the, I mean, Philly is about an hour away, but oh, in between there's, there's little towns like Millville and Vineland that are yeah. you know, not any city to speak of or that anybody has ever gone to. <laughs> you, you definitely have like a, a kind of a rock and roll look. Did you grow up on rock and roll? Yeah, I mean, um, I grew up stealing my dad's Led Zeppelin tapes and shit like that. Yeah, my first, yeah, my first tapes were, were Zeppelin. Yeah, some ACDC and shit like that. Um, then I got into country music, and then went through a bunch of random punk stuff growing up. My first show I ever went to was uh, "Sick of It All" in H two O. Oh wow, "Sick of It the, All." Yeah, my brother was in the hardcore, so he brought me when I was like a fourteen year old, just getting thrown around in the pit and shit yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. So I went through that kind of hardcore time, and now I'm into country music. Yeah, who are you into? Like new or you like old, it? old stuff? I mean, there's some new stuff. I yeah, like, like uh, Nikki Lane. Nikki Lane's great. Well, yeah. Great I played a show with her a couple times. So. Oh, yeah. oh, you play music? Yeah, yeah. I play in a country band. Oh, rad. Yeah. Um, and what are you guys called? Denver. What? Denver, like the city. Oh, wow. Yeah. What a great name. Um, yeah, just kind of Denver filling. Canteen. Denver Canteen. <laughs> that's, the, that's the next album. We got and do you guys play covers or you write your own music? Write, write our own music, yeah. And well, some covers, too. We play yeah. some Billy Joe Shaver songs. And, oh, sick. Um, you know, like Lucinda that. Williams? Yeah. yeah. I just had Kenny Vaughn on. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Awesome. That guy could, what do you play? Guitar? I play guitar and sing. Yeah, he yeah. tore it up on, uh, he tears it up on the telly, dude. Kenny yeah. Vaughn. If you don't know him, check him out. Uh, he's, he's out with. Um, uh, Marty Stewart right now. Oh shit! And that new Marty Stewart. Right? Well, he's played with Marty Stewart since 2002. But uh, you know, he played with Lucinda Williams before that. And if you don't know him, man, you got to check that guy out. I will definitely. But that Marty Stewart record's great. And you know, there's something about country, uh, like really good, authentic country, that I just absolutely love. And when people say, "I hate," I love all music, but country. Yeah, that pisses me off. Well, lot. that's just <laughs> stupid. You know, it's just like, well, you are—we're uh, not going to get along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good barometer. I just—I I usually give people who say that. You know, I've, I've come across people who have that that mentality. And is that a Waylon Jennings hat? Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, I made that a long time ago, and uh, yeah, I wear it every day. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking great. Day. Had Shooter Jennings on. Nice. Yeah, nice. he's good. What? But I'll a- give those people uh, like a Blaze Foley album or, or something like that. Some some old like uh, some something that's easy. Just good songwriting, good good vocals, and uh, or Towns Van Zandt. You know, everybody. Oh yeah, everybody you, loves Towns yeah. Van Zandt. The yeah. tip. It's- Do you um, play a telly? I uh, I play a Martin. I play acoustic. Oh, acoustic, rhythm, rhythm. Well, I have a telly, but I suck it. What Martin? Uh, D eighteen. Oh, D eighteen, great rosewood. Yeah, Those, rosewood. To me, D eighteen uh, and no, mahogany. The, I mean mahogany, yeah. but um, D eighteen and J forty five are both mahogany. And those are, they seem to have just this golden brown sound, you yeah. know? I love the D18 Golden Era. It came out about 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Fucking great, man. You know, I was at Guitar Center yesterday, or two days ago in yeah. Hollywood, and there were some 50s D18s in there that I was just drooling over. <laughs> D18s, you know, also with acoustics, you know, you it. that's why I would never buy an acoustic online, man. Yeah, you got to play it. You can play 20 D18s and 20 J45s, and they all sound different. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a J45 that was an absolute cannon. Yeah. You know, you just strummed it. And recently, uh, last week, I went to go play a Martin. I really want a, wanted a Martin small body like yeah. the Joan Baez. Yeah. Oh, oh, 42. Uh-huh. Um, 
you know, or like John Mayer has one out now, the stagecoach. They're just these small kind of par yeah. with the slotted headstock yeah. and the, the yeah. abalone. I was like, God, get one good one would be cool. And I was playing, I was like, this is really good. And then they had a, uh, uh, 40s banner J45 there a real one yeah. I picked it up and strummed that I was like oh yeah we well, fuck everything Some else yeah. yeah it was 10 grand I didn't leave with it <laughs> yeah. but it made me think like don't don't get a part time acoustic you know get yeah. one that's just fucking great I'll tell you the story how it got mine man um, I just happened to pop on the Craigslist one day and this dude wanted to trade it for a backpacker no way! He that he, the he was backpacker. Like, I gave one of those away. Dude, I, I was so I called him. I, I must have called it right away, and I yeah. called him. I was like, I got one. So I went. To the store Did you have one? one? Oh yeah, no, you went, went and bought one. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. two hundred fifty bucks or whatever. Oh, and uh, and I drove out. There's like an hour outside of uh, outside of Portland. I drove out there, opened the door. This dude is. It, he was the sketchiest dude I ever saw in my fucking life. Yeah, it was. There's this old lady sitting at the table just staring straight ahead, eating spaghetti off a styrofoam plate. And he's got a knife in his back, a steak knife in his back pocket. And I walk in, I see the guitar sitting over there. Yeah. And I have the brand new, you know, still tags hanging off yeah. of the uh, backpacker. And uh, I walk in. He invites me for spaghetti. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm just trying to get this guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some serial yeah. killer shit right <laughs> yeah, was, there. Dude, Sit down weird. for your last meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like, you know, I've. I've been in some scary situations, but this is like weird scary. Yeah. You know? And the guitar was over there. It was missing a string. It was, it, it was, it had broken the, uh, on the headstock. So it's got this awesome, I love the crack. It's like crack kind of down the headstock. And yeah. uh, I go over there, tuned it up a little bit, played it. He pulled the backpacker out. It was not in tune and he's strumming it. And he had no idea what the fuck he was doing. Right. And, uh, and he's like, is this cool? And I'm like, yeah, dude, is this fuck cool with you? And, he invites me for spaghetti again. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm just trying to get this guitar and get out of there. And yeah. uh, I'm, I'm heading toward the door. We shook hands on it. And I'm heading out. And he's like, man, I'm fucking loving you right now. What? I'm fucking loving you. And he goes in for a hug. And I no. tap on the back. Get the fuck out of there. Whoa, really? <laughs> yeah, and I like threw the thing in my, in my uh, car and drove a couple miles down the road, pulled over, and like finally had to, had, you had to look, at it. look at it. Yeah. The thing is, it's the best guitar I've ever played. What year? Um, it's a 73, I think. You get the headstock fixed? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, the headstock's all good. It's right. still got that, all, the crack, but I love yeah, it. It's yeah. like right through the Martin logo. The crack just reminds you of uh, the crack he wanted, yep. yours. <laughs> <laughs> he said he, uh, I thought maybe it was stolen, but he had a bunch of stories about it. He said he dropped it into a campfire. And, oh, man. Uh, that's how the crack happened. Wow, yeah. man. That is, I have a similar story about buying something. I was buying a turntable, a vintage, um, uh, fuck, what was the... I forget the name now. Uh, anyway, I went to this uh, guy's house in Topanga where all the hippies live. Yeah. And I was down one of these long dirt roads. I was like, where is this? And I pull up and it's just a, a trailer on someone's property, you know? Yeah. Just an old crusty trailer. And same similar thing. Walk up like, this is some chainsaw massacre shit, <laughs> yeah. you know? And... Uh, I knock on the thing, and the guy opens it up. He's like, yeah, you here for the turntable? He was old, like maybe 70, and he had a big machete, oh, sure. like right at the front door, yeah. like a, a real old school machete with the fucking black handle. You're on high alert. And I walk in, and the place stinks like cigarettes, you know? And I'm like, oh, my God, like really bad. And he was just like... You know, like an old school weirdo, just a hoarder and everything. So I grab the turntable, I pay him, and I go, thanks. <clears throat> and we put it in the car, and we get about a mile down the road, and we had to pull over and put it in the trunk. It smelt like cigarettes. Oh, then when I got home, I put it in my uh, garage for like a month to try to air it out. Yeah. It wouldn't air out. Then yeah. I got some, uh, it was wood, so I got some, uh, that pine... Like a lemon pledge, yeah, yeah, and, and put that on to try to soak up the smell, and <laughs> finally, I just had to sell it. Yeah, yeah it just it. smelled like fucking cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> to, you can't get that smell out. I, I hate it. I smoke, and I fucking yeah. hate the smell of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> you think it. you'll ever quit smoking? I'm trying. This year's my year, man. I gotta yeah. let it go. It's fucking but brutal. I don't even like it. You know, it's, I'm just purely addiction. I just oh yeah, pop them in just because I'm 
my body's addicted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just maintenance now. Yeah, yeah it sucks. I, I hate it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to quit this year. Yeah, I didn't like, uh, I quit, I, I, when I quit smoking, by the time I quit, it was a lot like candy. Uh, I like the one in the morning yeah. and the one after you eat or whatever, yeah. but all the other ones were just gross yeah. all day. That's how yeah. I feel about it, man. Yeah, that's how candy was. I love like the first few bites and then like 10, you know, a bag of gummy fish, Swedish fish or something later. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Anyway, so let's get into it. So you start this company and uh, I'm going to tell everybody what it is. It's a uh, it's ship John leather canvas denim design. And uh, you make incredible stuff. You make bags, you make um, denim shirts, you do collabs with Westco on boots. But really, what really sets you uh, explosive was this jacket that you came up with that that just set the internet and Instagram on fire. And I remember seeing it by, you know, on Instagram, you have those um, interest, that yeah. section called interest. Uh -huh. So, I've got, of course, Instagram knows I love denim and yeah. boots and everything. And this jacket comes up one day, which is called the, uh, what, what's it called? The Will, Will, Will's jacket. The Will's Name jacket. Bob Will's. Bob Will's. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I see it and I go, Oh, I got to fucking have one of those. Yeah. Of course, I email you and you go, oh, yeah, well, there are none. And I was like, what do you mean there are well, you none? you called me first. Oh, I, I called Chris you. Chris took you. We were, yeah, I you, called you. you. Chris, oh, yeah, because yeah. I was in Portland doing shows yeah. and your company's in Portland. And I said, oh, I want one of those. And Chris at Westco goes, oh, I know the guy. Uh, let's call him. And we called you at like 11 at night or whatever. Yeah. And you go, there are none. And I was like, what? And you go, well, I'm kind of in between getting it going. Let's talk about how you come up with this um, and how far into your company until you come up with it. Now, your company starts as what? Just so I, I, was, I was making, well, back to the beginning. I started... Um 12, uh, 11 years ago, I was I was uh, I moved to Portland almost twelve years now, and I start making cycling hats. I was into bikes, yeah, and started sewing wool because you can't you couldn't find them with no prints on the side or anything. Like you mean that. like those uh, breaking away? Yeah, little little short bills. Yeah, and, yeah. So I just started. That was that was me to kind of teach myself how to sew, and I had made a couple like little leather things, and um, from there, cycling hats turned into bags for bikes because I was working at a bicycle frame builder in Portland. Who was it? Called Vanilla Bicycles. Oh, okay. Custom, be beautiful. And bike. were you racing? Nah, I mean, I did a couple cycle cross races. I, I Cycling was, was always a part. I was a bike messenger in Philadelphia for a long time. Right. And so I just kind of always rode. Kind of that fixy thing that was really hot like 10 years ago? Yeah, yeah. I was, this, was, this was before it got real blown up when I was doing it. Um, yeah, I've rode a fixed fix gear bike around. Right. And, um, I don't know one anymore, but uh, um, so you know, cycling. I started making bags for bikes, and then with the bags came like heavy canvas and leather straps. So I started learning how to work with leather and to tie time, them onto the bikes. Yeah, and and close the bag and things. You know, right. um, just all kinds of little leather bits and doohickeys and. Um, so from there, I started messing around with different leather stuff, wallets and and. Uh, backpacks. I started designing backpacks and um, yeah, kind of that standard stuff a lot of guys make yeah, by hand. Yeah, for sure. Guitar straps. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, like you said, backpacks, uh, credit card holders, yeah, all, the, all that all stuff. So I'm doing that, and then I was making these backpacks out of this really the really heavy uh, twill that the wax twill that I make the jackets out of, and I was like, God. I was a, I was also a stonemason at the time, so I was just destroy clothing you know wow. completely destroy it and i i just thought that it might be a good idea to make a really thick jacket you know so it didn't so it didn't get holes in it and break you know right um something that would hold up and i tried it ma made one one day and and it worked it was it was i was like it was it's armor the shit is <laughs> was it pretty um pretty raw like almost a welder's coat you know, when it like design wise, when you first did it, like yeah, yeah, I kinda, it, it wasn't I kinda, like you know cool looking, was it? It looks a lot like it like it did today. Like the pockets are a little smaller and things like that. Um, it didn't have a zipper originally; it was just snaps on the front, right? Um, How'd you do that? Did you just cut a pattern from an old jacket you had? I, liked, or? I, I had a couple jackets, and it, it, instead of 
taking things. I took what not to do, what failed on other jackets. I won't mention any, any names of brands, but right. like, I had a couple jackets where there were chain stitched down the front and all that. You know, you, you rip one part of the chain stitch and the whole thing comes out. So, right. Um, and the way cuffs are attached, you know, I had cuffs falling off of jackets and stuff like that. So I re-engineered it in a way to where I, I thought it wouldn't work. I built, I built it like I built bags, you know, I just got right. heavy, heavy seams and, and I'm not trained in, in garment sewing. So I built it from what I knew from making leather and, and bags. Right, leather right. Stuff in bags. So, um, and it worked, you know. I, I wore I wore the first one for about a year, and uh, and it looked pretty similar to the one I'm wearing now. Yeah, pretty similar. The pocket shapes are the same. I mean, it's a pretty, it's it's, it's a, a pretty standard. Jacket. Yeah, I mean, growing up in in the Bay Area, I had a similar jacket by Ben Davis. Okay, yeah. uh, it was that long kind of black one. Yeah. It had the pockets. As a matter of fact, I just gave it to someone recently because gotcha. it was like way too big for me now. But I had it for years. Had a kind of a Mexican blanket liner. Yeah. And that's kind of a standard um, kind of design. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a chore. It's a chore coat. You know, that's what it comes down to. But, uh, you know, I added the, the zipper and the placket, which kind of changes a little bit. The material thickness is, is what really, I think, makes the jacket what it is. Now, when of course you're saying you're a mason or a uh, mason you were doing uh, that mason work yeah stone mason stone uh, mason dry stack rock walls and shit so when you decide on the material it was just the stuff you had left over from the bag exactly yeah. and now how did you find source out that material uh because it's it's what is it 20 ounce it's uh it's 18 ounce and then after it's waxed i think it's 23 ounces so, so is it called tin cloth or is that something philson named well it? so this stuff is is I get it from, funny enough, the town I went to high school in in New, New Jersey, Bridgeton, New Jersey. This is where they do all the waxing. Um, and Fairfield Textiles is what it's called. And they've been, they've been doing that fabric. Filson used to use this company right. right back. So it's, it's the same, kind of the same as tin cloth, but this is a twill. Tin cloth is a, a duck weave, you know, straight. Oh, it's a duck weave. Yeah. And what's the difference? Just how it's uh, put together? Yeah, the, the the looms. This is essentially the same as denim. Denim's a twill. Oh, wow. Um, so so it's it's done on a loom. Yeah. And tin cloth is done what? Like a, It's still done on the loom, but it, I don't mean, it's... It's just different. Well, yeah, the, the, the way that the the yarns pass over, your, pass right. over each other are made different, you know. So is... It comes already waxed yeah. when you buy it, right? Yeah. And so th what they're doing is they're making like massive yards of it and yeah. then have a machine that waxes it. It goes through vats. I've, I've been to the factory. And oh, wow. It, it, it's like giant giant rolls, and then they roll through vats of hot wax, and then it impregnates the wax in there. And wow. It's the other side, and it's, it's waxed. <laughs> I tell you... Uh, <laughs> A friend of mine, I won't mention his name because he, he'll be like, oh, dude. But <laughs> he hates work and waxed um, out, you know, products, you know what I mean? He's like, it's such a thing. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's why it's fucking good, man. Yeah. It's rad. It's bulletproof. Yeah. It's the thing I always hated about workwear, which I absolutely love was the fit it was always like way to and, and and like you said you work in yours i get it but i think that there's a um and this is what i really believe there's a uh, and i would love to collab with you um because there's a world out there of people that love slim fitting clothes yeah. And it might not be that big of a world, but they never buy Ben Davis. Yeah. Even Ben Davis has recently tried to uh, pick it up a little. Uh -huh. They've got like a slim pant now. Gotcha. Because the, you know, that kind of baggy work wear, because uh, you're working in yeah. it, I get you, you got to move. But if you well, love... I have a theory the about that too, sorry. To, uh, yeah, go ahead. So when I, when I work in something... Yeah. I, there's a, there's a balance. Like I don't want extra fabric hanging around. Right. You know, I, but, but you also need to be able to move. Like these jeans are, they're not baggy, but they're not completely slim. Fit. Right. Um, so you need, there's, there's the balance of needing to be able to move enough, but no excess shit. You know, I don't like excess big baggy shit yeah. hanging around cause it gets in the way. Yeah. It when does when you're working. Um, but uh, what I think is great is if, if, if like what I loved about the jacket when I got it, 
is like you sent me a small and I and it's small most people wouldn't have said that fits you perfect yeah. it's a it's a problem I always have with uh, people when they're trying to sell you something yeah. they think well that you can move around it I love this one you can uh, you can uh, bundle up you know you can layer yeah layer in <laughs> and I go okay look here I don't fucking layer. Yeah. I live in LA. And when I'm somebody, I'm still, I'm hot blooded too. Like, I don't like a bunch of shit on yeah, me. Gotcha. I like stuff to uh, just one piece and a t shirt. They'll say stuff like that. Or when you're young, well, you'll grow into it. You know, yeah. they're just trying to sell <laughs> shit to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what I liked was I tried the small and you sent me the extra small. And man, it was a perfect rock and roll fit. Yeah, and you could tell good. that there's a world out there on your Instagram when they saw the photo. A yeah. lot of people were like, that's the fucking fit. Yeah, for sure. So it's almost like you could tell people, look, uh, this guy wore a small or extra small. Yeah. You can get the idea. If you like a little room, you go small. If you like rock and roll, yeah. uh, then you go extra yeah, small. Size down. I kind of explained that in the new size chart. I yeah. tried to like in, in my head redesign the way that you look at a size chart and right. I tried to put it put it into words and, and some some like illustrations so you can actually look at a body and I explained that a little bit. I can't remember exactly what it says, but it, you know, if you if you like a tighter fit, size down. If right. You wanna, if you want to layer it, <laughs> you want to throw stuff under. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, oh, that's kind of like what Shot does now. Yeah. They're like, look, if you like rock and roll, get one size down. Yeah. So you put together the jacket. And you're kind of wearing it while you're working. Yeah. And what happens? Does somebody come up and go, I fucking love that. Oh, people started losing their shit over So that. like, what, you just put it up on Instagram? Or, yeah, or were you it. wearing it around? How uh, long ago was this? Little, what's that? How long ago was this? Uh, probably almost three years ago. So, um, uh, so you're wearing it around and people are like, hey, man, I love that. Yeah. That, you know, it's, it's crazy how many, how many people like stop me on the street and that. It just... Not not even that know about the jacket, they just like the jacket the way it looks. You right. Know? Ask me where I got it, and I'll chat about it and shit. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing it around, trying it out. I wanted to make sure it, it you know, the construction would hold up, and I, it's it's changed the the ins and outs of the construction have changed a bunch since the first one. Like we added the the back pleats and. The They're kind of um, pleats for looks, though, right? Uh, well, no, they 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 extend the pattern a little bit. Um, right. We're, we're going to deepen that in the pattern a little bit. Uh, come oh, I, I don't like pleats. So for, gotcha. Because what happens with me, and I just talked to somebody about this last night with a Buco J24 jacket. Uh -huh. It has the, um, the gussets. Yeah. Yours are kind of like a pleat. It's not an actual gusset. Yeah. But once you get to a gusset, if you're a wide-shouldered guy or something, they stay blown out. Yeah. And then the jacket looks like it doesn't fit you. Gotcha. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Because the gussets stay blown out. Uh -huh. Where a gusset is great, it, it, it's made so when you move, it, it, it opens the back and you got movement. And then when you go back, it closes. But if you got a wide shoulder, it stays open stays all the open. time and yeah. it looks like an accordion. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really worried when I got the jacket, like, oh, fuck, it's got gussets. And then yeah. when it came, I go, oh, cool. They are just kind of like yeah. semi for looks. Yeah, there, it's, it's a style thing, but it, also, it does extend the, the pattern back there. So you can right. move it because of the fabric's so thick. It just needed a little bit more room back there. I don't so. think that the fabric is that hard to fuck with, you know, like as far as movement. Like it, you're it's, like, you're like, it's really stiff. But I've had some fucking four and five ounce leather jackets yeah. made of horse hide uh -huh. that would make that thing feel like a kung fu outfit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like ones where you're actually your shoulder blade and your armpits and your yeah. your neck start hurting because yeah, you're saying you couldn't get the mic up to your I couldn't get <laughs> the mic but eventually once it breaks in it's great yeah. you can get the mic up to your face yeah, but you sure. get these leather jackets that are like so thick and and uh not broken at all and you're yeah. like oh and some denim my yeah. buddy just bought some denim recently and he goes fuck i can't even sit in my car in these yeah. when do they break in and i'm like they break in eventually and when they do they're amazing he's like yeah, yeah. you keep saying that but fucking they <laughs> suck you know and um sometimes like the people can't handle a break-in yeah 16 ounce denim is perfect yeah 16 is is uh it's a great uh, denim, you yeah. know. Holds up for a long time, and it, it doesn't have that crazy, crazy break-in time. Still takes a little bit, but yeah. yeah. I mean, remember when like 
I think like Naked or Famous, someone had a 30 ounce denim yeah. <laughs> and it's just sat up in the corner. Remember that? Yep, yep. I, 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 that's just that's novelty at that point, you know. I was really into 21 ounce uh, Iron Hearts for a long time, but then I realized. You know, I'm on airplanes a lot, yeah. and you know, you're just sitting there like my balls. You yeah. know, everything's yes. crunched. Yep. So you get the the jacket up and going. You put it on Instagram, and people start to lose their mind. Yeah. yeah. And and so you're just a one man operation at the time. You're yeah. in Portland, and you're yeah. in that that shop. Is that shop? I love photos of your shop. Yeah, it's a beautiful building. I'm, I love that space. So I'm in there trying to make them myself, and and I went through, and I didn't. I'm self funded. Like I had no, I had no money to speak of. You know, trying to buy a sewing machine is, was like next to impossible to but to replace one if something happened. You know, and are you working uh, a job at the same time you're making this shit? At that point, I was. I, I was doing the stone masonry. Right. I worked at a bar too. Um, so and you're just hustling in Portland, yeah. and all of a sudden, this jacket, how many, how many people at first hit you up? Like a couple people like, hey, can you I, make me one? And you I go, opened yeah. up pre-orders, and I think I, it was 20 people. I and mean, half of it was friends and, yeah. and a couple, couple random people from the internet world and that sort of thing. Um, so 20 and, people. So in, in trying to make that, those 20 jackets, I'm, I'm still teaching myself how to make jackets. Yeah. And, uh, I'm glad I didn't get one of the first 20. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my arm's kind of smaller than the other one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so but I, I, you know, I'm not, I, I'm all self-taught, you know, yeah. through, through the 10 years or 11 years I've been doing this. Um, and the I've, sewing machines break it because the, the cloth is so yeah, thick, right? Yeah. So I had to get a new hook for it. And then I eventually I bought a new sewing machine thanks to a big job I had doing a, like a leather wrapped handrail um, on a, on a boat. So that, that what's that? Pretty, I did I did a leather wrapped uh, on a spiral staircase in a yacht. I I did like sewed on leather onto the handrail, and that was like the first money I could I had. You know, wow. <laughs> I, like, I could buy a new sewing machine now. Did somebody find you to do that? Yeah, yeah. They uh, just you know just asking around for leather workers, and um, ended up uh, they build these yachts in in Vancouver. They're beautiful. Everything's handmade. You know, they they mold the hull there. It's like 130 foot. They they mold it right there. Whoa! And then they have a metal shop. They build all the all the fixtures and all that shit. This thing had TVs that came out of the walls and shit like that. Wow! Um, and so you wrapped the whole stairway in leather. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty neat. That's sick. You know, the staircase was glass. You could see right through it. Wow! The spiral staircase. This is on a boat. <laughs> you know? I always wanted a leather floor at my house. That'd be badass. You know what I mean? Like a brown leather floor, yeah. like thick leather. It would hold up. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That'd be <laughs> cool. Um. I got so many scraps, I could probably build you one. <laughs> It'd be great, right? So, um, so I, you know, I, I did that job, got some money, got a new sewing machine, had a, problems with that off the back because it had to get tuned up for, for sewing that, that fabric there. And uh, Are you calling the company in Jersey like, hey, how do people sew this? No, I mean, I had sewn it. I'd, I'd used it um, for bags for a long time, so I, I knew how to use it and um, sew it and... Uh, it was just adapting those skills to a three-dimensional object, a jacket, you know. Right. It's not just a square bag anymore. It's got sleeves and it's got to fit on a body. Yeah, and then... Uh, and then yeah. how do you figure out sizes for people? So you got 20 orders. So I, t I took measurements of all the first 20, and yeah. they were all custom-made um, to fit. And that was a, that was a struggle for me because trying to figure out how much bigger to make it with that fabric because right and, and everybody wants to fit different you like it snug yep. this guy wants to put sweaters under it and shit like that so, yeah um so they were all i measured everybody's body or or had them send measurements and then um realized that was fucking crazy trying to do that yeah Custom because there. like yeah because you're just looking at it like okay the guy's arm is 27 yeah Oh, but his chest is 44, but the, he's eight feet tall. Like, yeah. it's just nuts, right? And I, and I realized in going through that, like, everybody kind of fits into a, to a size category. So yeah. I just, uh, with the help of Stephen Hurd, who's, who's my new partner in, in Will's Manufacturing, um, which is the new, the new venture that we're doing, I'll tell you about. Um, uh, we graded out the pattern and, and created sizes, and then we do a, a regular and a long version in every size. So that kind of covers it covers all the bases. Right. Much. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you can ask most people, hey, what size do you jacket do you wear usually? Yeah. Like a suit and then a leather jacket, and yeah. you can kind of understand. Yeah, you fit them in a category. Yeah. Um, so you make the first 20. Did you get them all out? Yeah, they're all out, yeah. <laughs> How point, long did it take you? Oh, it was like a year and a half. Whoa! Because yeah, it was, it was, I was still figuring shit out, like sewing machine breakdowns. All I don't have a mechanic that, that can like... Yeah, I would, so I'd wait a week for a mechanic to come and then realize it wasn't working still. And then another week would go by and just time just kept going by. On the sewing machine? Yeah, sewing machines. And then finally I bought the new one and everything was good. And then... What kind of machine you use for this kind of stuff? Like uh, a, just a well, Singer right, home machine? Yeah, no, no, no. no. Ah. Uh, Juki 1541 does a lot of the work. And um, uh, working with Steven now, he's got, he's got a full shop of like, you know, f- flat failing machines and uh, union specials. And yeah, it's got it's to be a, a compound walking foot or a needle feed to be able to go over that, that fabric right. for a lot of the parts. So once you get the 20 out, are you kind of like, fuck it or do you say okay let's make some more and you put it on instagram like for sale yeah yeah they they and then they went really quick the the next run i did sold out in like in literal seconds you know it was gone and i kind of fucked up with the one of the runs i opened it up and i i couldn't limit the inventory oh yeah i didn't know what size right we're gonna order and we were trying to take an order for 20 jackets yeah the website froze and by the time it came back up there were 50 orders in there and i was like holy shit what are we gonna do you know yeah but we honored it and made made those 50 jackets and and um, that was uh, like the following year yeah that was the following year so you so you start you do 20 yeah. then you do 50 yeah and then you say fuck it i need a partner now yep, yep. So, and, and so how do you seek that out so steven heard and um, we were doing jeans together mm-hmm. um he was, he's he in san francisco out, he helped me out with the pattern grading and, and so on um he's in san francisco um, he's a, he's a pattern fucking genius, man. Really? Yeah. He's, he's amazing. He's been doing this work for like 25 years or something like that, um, in, in workwear and denim and, and that, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we just start bullshitting, talking, he's helped me out and we're becoming friends. And then at a certain point I'm like, man, it'd be fucking cool if you just lived here in Portland and he's been in San Francisco his whole life. And we laughed about it and then we stopped laughing. And we're like, Oh shit. This would actually work, you know. We could yeah. build a factory up here and, and make a lot of these jackets. So, you know, the laughs turned into serious talks. And now, uh, come March, we're getting a new shop, and he's moving up. He already got an apartment up there, and um, we're doing it up, making a making a factory. So you're going to be making the jackets full time with uh, uh, more employees. How yeah. many employees? Well, have, there'll be four of us. Four of you? Yeah. And you guys yeah. are just all day just making these. Pretty much. Have you ever thought about having like somebody in Japan just make them? Well, I, I want to oversee it. I'm, I'm, I'm a picky motherfucker. Did you fly to Japan? I haven't. I haven't been to Japan. I actually just got my passport. I've oh never, wow! Never had a passport. But um, I mean, has anybody approached you? Like, say, Ironheart or or you know, you know, Strike Gold or somebody like, hey, let's partner up and we can make like a hundred a week or something. Um. I kind of want to do it myself. That's you great. Know, I, That's I, great. I, I'm just asking because yeah. you were telling me last night that you got 3,300 orders now, right? Well, there's 3,300 3, people on the waiting, on kind of the interested list. So right. I, it's, it's a mailing list that when I open up orders, I let that mailing list know and then they go ape shit and get them, which yeah. is awesome. I'm so thankful that the interest is that it's... it's and now they leave a deposit and you know it's real, right? Yeah. yeah. It's so funny, the... the um, I... I love the obsession for this jacket um, because I love people's passion. As yeah. we're, um, you're here right now for this weekend, which is the Inspiration LA, uh, which I talked about. I've talked about it for five years now. Yeah, it's it's a humongous uh, thing put on by Rin Tanaka yeah. of vintage uh, clothing and. And I always love it because you're going to get a guy who's dressed from 1952. You're going to get a guy in there dressed from 77. Yeah, for sure. You're going to get a guy who's dressed like uh, me, rock and roll. It's people that have a passion for well-made, handmade items Mm -hmm. and stuff that they like to look good when they leave the house. They like to... This is who I am. Yep, if yep. I'm from 1976, yep. 
and but it's 2018 fuck yeah man that's who i am because in that world of um i always call it the cotton docker world of course people that's not so true now but but in the world of where people just run into a gap and throw shit on this is what i wear and they don't care that's cool or whatever but you you just look like a civilian in the world yeah for sure when I see you walking down the street or if you see me walking or somebody from inspiration, yeah. you go, oh, you, you mean, look, oh, great boots, yeah, killer totally. ring, cool watch, yeah. rad pants, whatever. And, um, you know, the passion of uh, well-made, handmade items is just incredible yeah. at inspiration. Oh, it's so cool, man. I it mean, really that's, is. That's actually, I, I went to inspiration, uh, I think it's three years ago now, now and that's where I met Josh. From right. Good art and talk about inspiration i mean god damn every everything that they do over there is inspires the hell out of me I yeah mean, good art's amazing um so that you know and and met met a lot of other good friends uh through through this show and well the I've people are incredible at yeah. this like we went to this party last night at good art yeah and all the people i was just like this is fucking great yeah. you know you're just hang with people and, and everyone's into you know they're into they're always going to be into good music, yep, some sure. good film, some electronics, some you know stereo hi-fi yep. gear. The yep. sky's the limit on it. Old totally. cars, yep. maybe Porsche 911s, you know, whatever. Yep. It's it's rad, and uh, and to see people wearing stuff. And anyway, my point is, the passion for your jacket is so incredible that when one time on Instagram. I was fucking with you because you and I are friends. And yeah. I said, hey, where the hell's mine at? <laughs> and then that fucking asshole was like, hey, man, why don't you just chill <laughs> out, dude? Like, we're all here waiting. And he's he's making them as yeah. fast as he can. He started going up. And I, I just that wrote, remember I wrote, relax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I, it's cool because yeah, that kind of... I'm cool on that. That's what I'm saying. The passion is yeah. incredible. Well, that happened. Um, people started to have my back because people were pissed off when they couldn't get it because i can only open up so many i don't want to bog us down you know you can't right. you can't sell 300 jackets and then not sell more jackets for a year you know right. it's, just, it's you're gonna look like you're a closed business yeah they're i mean it, it's kind of how it is right now it, it's always sold out on the website and people are like how can i get this so but, yeah so people are getting mad at me because yeah. they couldn't get jackets. I got like hate emails and are you, comments. Are you afraid of someone just saying, fuck it, we'll just steal this guy's shit and make him ourselves? I don't care. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want that to happen, but I'm right. not scared of it. I'm just know. wondering because you know how people are like, we'll just buy one. We'll just cut it open yeah. and start making our own. We yeah. can make like a hundred a week, yeah. you know, but still, yeah, it wouldn't be the real deal. You yeah. know, it's, it's like, I think the exclusiveness and the hard to get also is what makes it so cool. Yeah, for sure. And and that was like, that was definitely not by design. It was by yeah. necessity. I just, I'm trying to figure this out, figure out, yeah. figure out how to run a business, figure out how to exist in this world, you know? And, um, I think it did, though. I think, you know, people want it because they can't have it, you know, yeah. and, and that's a pretty big part of it. But I'm trying to change that, trying to make more. Once you get up and running, yeah, I'm going to be ready to uh, do some modifications on it. All right, we'll talk about it. For the ultimate, the ultimate, uh, the Delray model. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That'd be, cool. That'd be cool. I love mine. I've worn it every day. It's crazy because even comedians that don't, aren't even really into that stuff, yeah. We're commenting on the photo like, holy <laughs> shit, that's a rad jacket. Where do I get well, I it? Emails from, a, I don't know how many of your buds. Like, oh, yeah, but he's got the jacket. How to get one? I'm like trying to explain to him. Like, yeah, I'm getting there. Like, all more soon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. That's yeah. cool, man. Hell yeah, man. Because it really is. It's such a fucking great jacket because it's not leather. It's not denim. Yeah. And I always liked those tin cloth jackets. But they were boxy and square. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, I remember I had bought, and I love Filson. I had bought a Filson, um, I think it was called like the Cycle Rider or so, Rider Jacket or gotcha. something. Okay. And I was like, this is cool, man. And, and I went into it. It was when I was in Portland up there, you know, talking yeah. to you. And I went into another store, and a guy goes, 
I, he goes, oh, yeah, good jacket. Yeah, the Ship John one's cool. And I go, oh, yeah, I want one of those. I'm trying to get hold of him. He goes, yeah, it's not as boxy as that one. Yeah. And when I he gotcha. said that, I was like, it was, I was like, he's right. This fucking thing's boxy. <laughs> I came home. I put it on eBay right yeah. away. No, you sold it. Oh, yeah, instantly. Because it was like, it was boxy. Yeah. I don't like boxy square yeah. jackets, you know? Yeah, it was, and that's, I mean, they, they hold on to that fit from, from long ago. And, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I never did like the fit of those either, um, the Filson ones. I've had it a handful throughout throughout my working days and all that shit. But right, um, yeah, the fit never never worked with me that good. So now the factory, you guys, where where did you find the factory at? In Portland somewhere? Uh, I should hear back about the building hopefully by Monday. Um, oh wow! Yeah, right right in Portland. Stand You're still waiting to hear? Yeah, dude. Um, we had a. It's been. Trying to find commercial real estate right now is fucking crazy up there. So. Oh yeah, because everybody wants to live in Portland now. Yeah, yeah. it's brutal. What's uh, you got a house or what do you rent? I live in a like duplex, rent it. Yeah. And how, what's your rent? Uh, I pay ten seventy five for two Whoa, bedroom. Ten for what? Two bedroom. Oh, you yeah, you, you had to have that from years ago or something, right? It's a pretty good deal for Portland right now. Yeah, um, but I dude, I lived in this place for. Three years where I was paying four hundred bucks a month for a two bedroom. What <laughs> in Portland? Yeah. What was that? And in in that time, yeah, it was it was kind of a it was in foreclosure and it was supposed to be short term, but it kind of just drug on. Yeah, and in that time was when shit like went crazy. So yeah. I was before that I paid like five seventy five and and then four hundred bucks for which is just insane. That's an unheard of price. Yeah. and in that time rent went from what I what I had used to be paying to like double yeah so a thousand over a thousand bucks to me was like holy shit yeah <laughs> right can't, can't afford this you know yeah um, but i'm used to it and, and uh yeah because you had the cheap. warehouse too you were renting yeah. right yeah i love portland portland's it, a good town you landed up there and uh it was random that i landed there wh why why wh my wife and i were living in the volkswagen van try <laughs> just driving all over the country you know we're stopping here stopping there out oh you were there. just hippie in it yeah we we're hippie in it whoa rad and uh i had to meet somebody in portland um more so in the hippie and i got a job trimming trimming weed in humboldt and yeah driving back we drove back to philly got married drove back and we're meeting these guys in humboldt but they happened to be in portland so we you know, went north a little oh, bit. Oh, you're just and, trimming. Yeah. Well, we were in Portland for a day. Then we went down trimming and then got done with that. It was a uh, harvest and let's go check out Portland again. So I, I went up there and uh, we were living in the parking lot on Division Street. That's not there anymore. And um, walked into Stumptown Coffee and I got a job there. I, I didn't even know what a latte was. I drank yeah. fucking truck stop coffee, you know. I yeah. No idea. And walked in. You guys hiring? And that was the best inter introduction to Portland because I got to meet all, all kinds oh, of yeah. people. So you're living in a parking lot and you decide, fuck it, let's get a job and stay here, yeah, you and yeah, your wife? Just, yeah, just try it out. You got to have a pretty rad wife that wants to live in a, a fucking she's, Volkswagen. She's, she's the best person I've ever met in my life. Man. Wow. She's awesome. Um, so yeah, we, uh, she got a job, I got a job. And then we so you're working, but place. you're living in the van still? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you for, showering at? For a little bit. I'm gym? Fucking, yeah, we went to a gym a couple times. and. Uh, <laughs> You weren't we, showering. I wasn't showering that much. <laughs> Let's be honest here. <laughs> no shower, John. That could have been your company, also. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, you know we got jobs and finally got a, an apartment with a shower and all that shit. And yeah, bathroom, toilet. It's yeah. interesting how life is, right? You're just yeah. traveling around. You're just living hippie, which is I I totally. Uh, off the grid yeah. i respect that in a way of like kind of cool like you know i i have fantasies of that you know it was fun man i i would i would never take that back that yeah that was, was an amazing time and i busk you know i had my guitar with me make five ten bucks and get some get a pizza or something like that you know? oh you're just out there playing music on the street corner yeah, yeah. wow i remember the i think the most i ever made was 20 bucks was really in one city yeah yeah right yeah you know? um it was, that was in uh, Flagstaff, I think. Flagstaff, Arizona made 20 Somebody gave me a $20 bill, and I was like, shit, we're eating good tonight. <laughs> 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 it was good. How were you paying for gas and shit? Just uh, we, we, had a, we had a credit card, and we, we had saved like 1000 bucks or something like that. So um, definitely put a lot of money on a credit card. <laughs> wow. Plastic Pretty rad. Card. So um, now here you are with this fucking full-on successful business. Let's go through a couple of the items uh, I absolutely worship the Whalen backpack. Thanks, You're man. still making that, right? Yep, yep. 
it kind of took a backseat to jackets for a little bit, but I'm, I'm trying to reintroduce it pretty soon. Yeah, I need that for my podcast gear because yep. I think it's just perfect for podcast equipment because I'm using that this vinyl stones bag and gotcha. it's going to start to fall apart. Yeah, I yeah. love that. There's a uh, there's a a lock on it um, that's like a, a a drawstring lock. Yeah, it's a little wedge wedge design that I had seen something kind of like it on an old like German military bag, but I, I, I saw it and then I could never find any other thing made like that. And right. I wanted to use that for the drawstrings in my bag. And I, and so I just kind of designed my own version of it. It's solid brass. And I was, I used to hand file every single one. Yeah. How do you do it now? I get them the parts laser cut and I still, I still do all the, I oh, tap yeah. everything myself and do the countersinking and I finish the edges in my shop. And I love this bag. Let's talk a little bit about it now. Um, they're sold out. They have a waiting list also, yeah, right? Yeah. So what do you do? You just do a run and people buy them. How much is that bag? Uh, 575. It's fucking great. Now what's Thank the you. brass things on the bottom for breathing? There's That's like, just so your pockets don't fill up with water. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, I got you. Yeah. If it's raining. God, it's so good. And then you also do, um, like denim shirts now yeah that are kind of yep. like cowboy shirts yeah western style a little bit and uh and what kind of denim is that where are you getting the denim uh the the one that is almost the run that's almost done now was cone mills oh, and they just closed yeah um, where's everybody gonna get their denim dude, now I'm, I'm kind of freaking out about it because i they they stopped making heavy denim a while ago and i can't, I can't use 14 ounce or anything like that that's kind of like the yeah the heaviest they use it, it just feels like shirt weight to me for a jacket or right jeans, yeah um so now so, uh, people I, can't get denim in japan because is it is it like a a kind of a red tape thing there where the denim people only sell to the people they're working with because like oh, everybody like uh lucky or not lucky brand sorry uh jean shop in new york yeah. used them i think roy used them uh-huh. uh everybody in america that was making jeans here was using yeah. the cone uh, mills yeah yeah, it's it's a damn shame. I don't I don't know the whole story why they why they shut down. But. I just got an email on it with a story, and I'm going to read about it gotcha. because I think on Heddles they tell the whole story because okay. it seems to me like somebody else would just buy it. That's I, yeah. I think this was the fourth owner, so it must not be that profitable. Gotcha. You get all the denim you need for yeah. a year, and then you're not keep buying it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like her Horween in Chicago with leather, where yeah. you always need leather i think there's only so many pants being made by people by hand yeah. and the rest is just you know indonesia I mean, or, you know and if you look at it there's a lot of people making really great jeans but the the scale of it for a company like that they need to sell like ten right. thousands of yards right that's to, what i'm talking about meet, i think and and you know there might be a, a roy denim or, or a jean shop that's you know they're they're Making a lot of jeans, but not yeah. to the scale. Not that, like a million thing. a month yeah. was what yeah. they need for a full factory yeah. and employees and everything. Yeah. And they're, they're a, a so giant. where do you think people are going to get denim? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to start using a lot more Japanese stuff. I love the denim they make over there. I love it. Um, Kuroki Mills. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful denim. Yeah. Um, so probably a lot more of that. There's a, there's a Can uh, you get it? Yeah, yeah. Steven has has a lot of ties over there. So we can, Dope. Yeah, we can get a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, there's a mill opening in, a, or it's already open um, in Sacramento, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, Houston Mills. Um, they're they're working out their denim right now. I'm gonna try some of that. Holy shit! I haven't yeah. even heard about yeah. that. Yes. And what is it? Some like hipster dudes that open something? I don't think it's hipster. I think he, I, I think he was a military dude actually. Wow! Uh, and and they got thick thick denim. Yeah, yeah. They're working out a, a I think a 15, 16 ounce right now. That's that's all uh, botanical dyed. It's pretty cool. Whoa. All organic fabric. Text. It's what kind of dyed? Botanical. I What's think that? Uh, flowers and shit. I don't. I don't know exactly what flowers, but oh yeah, because Strykel like was doing dye. like a mud dye. Yeah. Wow. Um, so they're they're doing some cool shit. I'm excited to 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 start making, start trying it out, at least testing it. I want to, you know, I like to wear things for yeah, a yeah. long time before I offer it. Um, that's going to be interesting to see. Let me yeah. know what the. I wonder if they got a website. I'll look it they do, up. Yeah, yeah. Houston, but without the O. H U S T O N. All right, I'm going to look that up now. So you also make a black jacket that's yeah. just like it, which is next for me, man. Wow. I'll have to and, get you in one of those. Yeah, and then you make a denim one, right? Denim version, but and then denim denim ones are on hold because we can't find the right denim. You ever going to make it in leather? Well. 
I don't know if I should talk about it. Yeah, I can talk about this. Yeah. Um, Langlitz and I are doing, Langlitz is making a, a leather wills jacket pretty soon. Whoa, yeah. man. That's that's <laughs> the Delray right yeah. there. Because the sample's you know, getting made right now. I can't wait. I'm, I'm like giddy as a fucking, you know, I just can't wait. Can you, will you be able to get it in horse hide? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, we're doing the sample out of goat. Um, but, right. You know, they're all going to be made to order, so. Oh, like I gotta ones. see it, dude! Yeah, I can't wait, man. And it's gonna be exactly the same fit and everything. We're doing a like we're keeping the zipper sleeve from a Langlitz. I want a little oh, bit yeah. of Langlitz flavor in it. Right. So we, we sat down with one of these and a couple of their jackets, and and just you know we're keeping like I said their their sleeve essentially on a on a on a body that's built like the Will's jacket with the pockets and shit like that. So now is, is will the sli- the sleeve be slim? Like, cause your sleeve is incredible. Uh, it's nice and slim. Yeah. Is my jacket a new pattern from the collaboration with Steve? Yeah, yeah. Steve and I developed. Steve did the actual. Cause that fucking pattern, yeah. that jacket fit. Me, I mean, that's just incredible. The fit. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm well, did, this man. this is all I fucking need, you yeah. know. For it, so I would be a little leery if it was changed at all. Yep. You know what I mean? No, it'll, it'll be a pretty similar fit. I I tried on a couple of their. I uh, can't remember what the what the model they have that is actually built pretty similar. Uh, damn it! They remember. have one, huh? That's like a kind of a wheels jacket, all right? I, 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 I mean, I never different see. different pocket setup, right? And it doesn't have a collar. It's one of those short short collars. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's easily it's easily translatable into the wheels jacket. So, kind of using using that as a starting point. You're also doing a collaboration uh, on, with Westco on boots quite a bit, right? Yeah, yeah we've got a couple new models coming out pretty soon. And, and what are your inspirations on boots? What do you like in a boot um, that you think would, you know, like, okay, instead of just a standard Westco, this is my Ship John version. What do you, what do you bring to the plate? Well, the first, the first one was, was a... I love the I love, I love I kind of I've been wearing cowboy boots for a long time so I wanted the something with a heel and I wanted veg tan boots right that was that was the first one we did I was like we got to do so these this other. here yeah that was a leather that hasn't come out yet I was just testing that one well that's kind of a natural leather that turns from oils and everything yeah. turns I love that yeah. you know. Um, so what do you, so are you making like a, uh, you got some new versions of West coast? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing a, uh, an engineer boot. That's like a Brown and then a Brown rough out combo. So now it's just like Chris and I will just shoot shit and pick out, pick out cool leathers and make stuff happen. You know? Yeah. It's so great. Um, it's just cool to, to, you know, anybody can, can build a custom Westco, but it's cool to think of how I'd, I'd like one, like to see one and just show it to the people and say, you can get this one now. Check this out. Right. You know, it, it works out great. I, I respect the hell out of that company. And now you had a killer work with them. You had a killer benefit that I was supposed to do, but I couldn't do it cause I was in New York, but Lanigan did it. Mark Lanigan, yeah. one of our uh, favorite humans on the planet. Yeah, Let's talk a little bit that you had a concert at your uh, shop and uh, Lanigan played it. How fucking rad is that? It was that? awesome, man. It was, it was one of the best. How many I'm people like, were there and what was the benefit people. for? Um, it was uh, ended up being it was Southern Poverty Law Center, but that weekend the hurricane happened in Houston, so I ended up splitting it right in half and sending a bunch of money down to the Houston Food Bank to help the folks down there. Rad. Um, I just like you know I, I I've done a lot of those shows and had great people play. I I don't want to make money off of it. I'd rather gather people together for a good time and raise money for something good. Yeah. So I've done like in the past ACLU and Southern Poverty Law Center and. Um, well, a couple other things, but that one was extra special because it was like four generations of Pacific Northwest music. Chris Newman, um, Michael Hurley. I don't know if you do you know Michael Hurley? Uh, no, but music? I'm looking at the picture here. Does uh, he play sax? No, or, no, that's or, his, his buddy. Michael Hurley's uh, an old folk songwriter. Oh, gotcha. And, um, and then Bliss and Trapper, who's a newer band out of new they've been around for like a decade but right you know in in this lineup they were like the the new generation and then lanigan and michael hurley chris newman it was a cool show cool setup and how many people were there about 100 people wow i'd had to, I had to limit it i think what we should do is when you get the new shop going let's just do uh when you do the grand opening or whatever an yep. open house 
Let's have a comedy show. That'd be killer, man. I'll I'd, fly I'd up, that. do it, stay at your house or whatever, yeah. and then fly home, you yeah. know, the next day. But come up and do a full-on night, you That'd know? Be great. Because uh, I love the, I love the thought of doing shows. You know, everybody's like, yeah, do some shows in rock clubs, but how about in places like your factory yeah. and shit like that? You know, where well, the that's people. That's the beautiful thing about having. Because it's an music. event and people yeah. go. Yeah, and, and people, you know, the, the, I'm lucky to have a beautiful building and people just look around and they're seeing Mark Lanigan in this weird fucking shop where yeah. some guy makes leather stuff. Are you just, giving that joint up? I'm going to hold on to it for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm giving it up essentially. I'm, I'm pretty sad about it. I love that building. Yeah, <laughs> it's so cool. It, yeah. The look of it, you know, um, it just, look, the look of your shop now, and you guys can go on his Instagram and see all this stuff we're talking about. It's just incredible. Uh, his Instagram is Ship John. And look at his shop and look at everything that he does. Now, you got a lot of the denim shirts. Those are out right now. You can just buy those. Uh, no, they were all pre-orders. So all oh, the ones wow. in that picture are gotcha. for, for customers. But I'm launching a black denim shirt, the one I got on, actually. Pretty oh, soon. yeah. Wow, that's nice. That's the, this is a Cone Mills Broken Twill. I think it's like a 12 ounce or something like that. So this and how much are the, Let's go through the prices real quick. The, the jacket is how much? Four seventy five, and it's Four it's seventy five for the jacket. Yep. Yeah, yeah. God damn, that's a deal. Um, I'm telling you, that thing is fucking gold, man. It's I like, feel I, you know, for me, I, I, I come from a when I when I price stuff, you know, you have to price it a certain at a certain amount, but I still try to keep it low enough to where it's accessible for people. Right. You know, I could, everyone always tells me, there's so many people interested, you got to charge more for it. I'm yeah. like, no, then why would I do that? You know? Yeah, then, yeah. Then my buddy can't buy it, you know? I think 600 is fair on it. It could, it could I be. Mean, there, in, I mean, I, I see what's out there. Yeah. 400 is rack stuff. Yeah. Normal, you know, stuff rack. Yeah. A couple hundred more, you got something that other people don't have. But we, we, we do good on at the price. We yeah. we make money, and well, I, I don't want to charge people money just because I can. You know. Oh no, that's, I get it. You know I, I mean? I'm not saying grab the people. I'm just saying I know how much yeah, fucking sure. work no, goes into yeah. this shit. Yeah. And you know, I always love when someone goes like, uh, you know, I can't believe you you spent like three hundred dollars on those pants, and it's like. Yeah, but I got one pair. Yeah. It's going to last me five fucking years, even longer yeah. if I want to just keep getting them fucking fixed. Yeah. Uh, you're going to buy $1,000 pairs or yeah. $80 pairs, yeah. and they're going to fall apart. Yeah. They're made in China, yeah. and they're just garbage. What? And my closet, it's just clean. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> a Buko, a real McCoy's Buko jacket. Your jacket some denim and some iron heart flannels yeah. and and i've got bunch red t-shirts <laughs> yeah and a bunch of red t-shirts and i got clothes for life yeah for sure i and think boots. there's a, there's a resurgence of people realizing that right now yeah. not even in the in the like the inspiration denim world like just normal people who who don't care about the fashion end of it who just want stuff that's going to hold up right know? and people are starting to realize that you know i i could spend like i said 80 bucks on 10 pairs of jeans or i could just buy this one Yep. amazing product that's going to hold up for a long time and 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 you know people they don't understand when you wear something nice and well made people come up to you like look they came up to you on your jacket and they're like hey man that shit looks great or you look great or yeah. where do i get that stuff you know it's it's a different world i get man. more comments on like at the grocery store you know the lady <laughs> checking me out or the guy checking me out i'll be like where'd you get that jacket and I, you know i'm usually pretty sheep as about sheepish about it yeah. like, oh, it's Ship jobs. Yeah. I would just tell them the name or say, oh, I make these, you know, and try to. Yeah. Um, I never try. People to. ask me, and it's like, if I know they're just surface talking, I don't even bother because it's like, you know, if somebody, like somebody goes, hey, where'd you get that jacket? I go, my friend made it. Yeah. And then if they go, whoa, really? Like, what's that about? Then I get into it. Yeah, but if they go, it. oh, yeah, cool, you know, or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, uh, you know, it's such a. Uh, because I'm going to tell them they're going to go on the website, then they can't get they can't it. Have it. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's what I loved about having you on. It, this is in no way at all some kind of advertisement or yeah. anything, because you can't get what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't want any more advertisement. Right, right. But what? A, that was funny when I first talked to you. I go, man, it's gonna it's gonna be great for your business. You're like, I don't need any more business. That's a funny thing to hear, right? Yeah. 
God. It's a, it's a cool it's it's a it's a great problem like where where I'm, it's it's no complaints but it's also yeah. it's it's hard to like we we need to build a factory to to right keep up with this shit yeah yeah um, I'm excited about it man I I like I I'm excited for you my too dream you know it's I get to own my own business and and make shit every day I use my hands all the time it's know? so great dude I mean you just think about like randomly that's how I love about life you know randomly you're just driving around America. And it just figuring out your life in a in a Volkswagen bus yeah. or whatever, trimming buds, yeah. you know, <laughs> serving coffee or whatever. Yeah. And now look, you got your own business. Yeah, How long nice. have you been in business? Uh, I'd say I started selling wallets to buddies probably eight or nine years ago or something like that. Uh, um, so about as long as I've been doing comedy. Yeah, that's great, man. And then, uh, you know, it, like, like I told you earlier, I, I was working other jobs. I've right. been I've been just doing this um, as a full time job for about three years, I think. Right. Now. It's just like uh, comedy. Yeah. I was doing comedy eight solid years, but I'm selling motorcycles yeah, yeah. and yeah, shit. You know? Yeah, you were the Harley shop, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, you know, eventually you're like, well, I do comedy for a living, which makes it crazy scary because, like, look, I didn't go on the last three nights and I'm shitting my pants. Yeah. You know, like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah, um, but I'm happier than ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cool. And 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 I'm glad you found what you love. And I can't wait. Uh, to see some of the other products you got coming out. And uh, if somebody wanted to buy something from you, what is available now? Wallets or something? Yeah, everything's made to order. I don't usually stock a lot of stuff. Gotcha. So, yeah, there's a bunch of wallet designs on there. Um, hats. Hats. I got more hats coming right beanies. now. They should, they should be done. Loving the beanies. The beanies sold out. Dean made me a special run of them, and they all went. Um, Fuck. And, and uh, then... Um, the bags, like I said, I love the bag. I'm going to open that up pretty soon. I got a couple of customers who've been waiting forever. and um, yeah. those up. I don't like to stack too many things on top. Right. Know? So right. after I make these bags, I'll open it up to maybe five more or something like that. And no no threat to the factory in Jersey that's making the uh, the wax cloth, right? They're, they're up and booming. I hope not. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do they I haven't ha heard any. Have Hell you seen any other colors in there, like yeah, they, yeah, they like army the green? Yeah, they do have a darker green. Um, Ooh, I gotta dig into what they have right now. I'm gonna, I, it's kind of hard for us to introduce other colors. I got gotcha. you. We, we don't. We don't. But have I a think lot of one other uh, third one, man, an army green, like a, a, a like an M65 yeah. field coat. Yeah, that'd be cool. Because that's kind of a vibe of what the jacket is, yeah, also. For sure. So if it, if it was the army green, you know, yeah. ooh, fuck. I got that. a lot of interest in black ones. I think that'll be the next, the yeah. next step. A lot of people want a black one. Oh, yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready so. for black because man, it looks great in black. And is it dark, dark black? Because well, it kind of has like a with the wax on there. It kind of gives it like a like a sheen of of a little bit lighter black. It's right. Like a gray. It's not. It's not Right, pure, pure as black as black gets. The right. croaky black ones we made with Josh. Well, that's denim. That was yeah, that was black. Right, that's like fully black. Um, yeah, we did a good art version of that. Are those gone? I never even yeah. saw one. They 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 went away real quick. Well, how many were there? I think we did twelve or something like that. Fuck, yeah, yeah gone. They're, they're expensive. <laughs> oh yeah, how much were they? I think what did we charge? Fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, denim and yeah. had all the silver snaps silver and everything. Snaps, yeah. yeah. That's sick. And I was I was pleased to do that with Josh. It was really cool. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is. He is. So are you, man. I can't thank you enough, and oh, I'm glad you. that we met. Totally. Me too. And I'm looking forward to doing comedy in your new factory. Please come up. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you make here, and also seeing uh, how my jacket just... Uh, Oh, you know, turns out. How do I rewax it? It's so hard with the hair dryer and all that. Dude, I'm actually I'm I'm working on. There's this company. We're early in talks, but I'm working on my own cream, like a like a heart. I don't I don't like the the like rub it on there with a. It's with just a, yeah. crazy, right? Um, so I'm working on a, on a developing a whole new thing to do that. Really? Cream, yeah. Um, hopefully, have it done sometime this year. But uh, have you tried? Have you tried stuff yourself? Yeah, I've used Otter Wax. They make that up in Portland. That stuff works pretty oh, good. Oh, that stuff smells yeah. good, too. Yeah, yeah it's beeswax. Beans. Yeah, it's it smells good. like um, like almost it was in a fire. Yeah. You yeah, know? Totally. Well, that's a great smell. Yeah, that stuff's good. As of right now, that'd be, that'd be my recommendation. to Right. Whatever you, whatever. And does that wipe on, or you got to heat it up? Heat that stuff up. 
Yeah, because I got some Berber wax yeah. for the Berber jackets. Uh-huh. Yeah, you got to heat it up and use like a heat gun and then get it on like evenly. It's fu- I'd yeah. rather pay someone to do it. Well, that's the thing. I want to offer that as a service down the line, too. You yeah. can send your jacket back in and we'll do you up. And I believe in uh, that. I want, to, I want to do that down the road. There's, there's a lot of things I want to do down the road. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, man, for doing this show. Thanks and uh, do you have any music online or anything? Yeah, Denver, Denver the band. Um, you can look it up on it's on Spotify. All right, man. Thank you so much. Thanks Check them out. Me. Ship John on Instagram and uh, support them. Uh, anyway, I don't know how you can and <laughs> maybe get on a waiting list. And uh, check out his photos. There's some incredible photos on his uh, Instagram of all the stuff he made. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Keep the candles lit, handmade, right here on Let There Be Talk.